2019 pandemic. Well, the nursing union says that uh, their concerns have not been addressed. And uh, let's now speak to the spokesperson of uh, DINOSA, or rather the, the, the president of DINOSA, Simon Tlungwani. Uh, Mr. Tlungwani, a very good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to the agenda. Thank you very much and good morning to the viewers. First of all, what are the main reasons that have been cited in that letter to the president? Well, uh, let me state that um, we have been engaged with the, the employer in this regard is the Department of Health as well as the Department of Public Service and Administration since April and in May we tabled agenda items that we wanted addressed by the employer. But to date the, the employer representatives come back to us and say they don't have a mandate. So it then tells us that... Uh, the, the employer is not serious, neither committed to dealing with the matter. That's why we are then writing this letter to the president. And um, the DPSA has told us as the employer that there is no, we are not going to receive a wage increase for this year. And throughout this time of COVID-19, nurses um, they have contracted COVID-19, 270 of the health workers have died, around 227,000 uh, have, have, have contracted the disease. But overall, in all that, the time of COVID-19, when it was rife at that time, when the, 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 the numbers were too high, nurses were experiencing difficulties because of many lockdown rules, including the transportation issues, where we were paying more than the, the normal prices in the taxis and many other difficulties. Throughout that time, we have not been cushioned neither by, by, by government or any other person whatsoever. So we're saying... What the president is saying, he appreciates the health workers. We are saying now we are appealing to his conscience to know that nurses are suffering and having it difficult during this COVID-19, and particularly because of the lockdowns and the difficulty of the, of the numbers and all that. We want him to intervene in ensuring that we get wage increase that we are due to have received in April this year, which we signed as an agreement in 2018 on Resolution 1 of 2018, as well as the danger allowance, or we call it it's a risk allowance, but in other countries uh, like in Zimbabwe, they are giving them danger allowance in monetary value. In the state of Louisiana, in the U.S., they are giving them monetary value of $250 per month. But we know that in Ghana, they are giving them tax, nurses tax break for three months. And we're saying if the government doesn't have cash, they must just give us a tax break for three months or six months. It will be appreciated. But we're saying the president must stop talking, um, verbally saying he appreciates what the health workers are doing, but he must practically implement and cushion nurses and uh, other health workers because we're having difficulty at the current moment. You know, uh, Mr. Tlungwani, in the letter there are steps shown about how other governments have prioritized healthcare workers. So are any of those steps practical in the South African context? They are certainly practical. Um, if, if the employer was coming back to us in the beginning chambers saying this is not practical or they don't have money, we were going to show them other steps that can be done. For example, when you issue a tax break, it is practical, you just have to know that they are going to give people who are working and have worked. Uh, remember, nurses have never ever taken a day off because of COVID-19. And you would know that in other areas, when there's a case of COVID-19, they would close facilities. But in health, where there's COVID-19, that's where nurses are going. So it is practical in that you simply you simply take break is the simplest to give. But in terms of the, the wage increase, it's an agreement because if they don't honor that agreement, it means they are in an, on an onslaught of fighting all the bargaining rights that we have gained throughout the, the dawn of democracy. So we can't regress and go back to... In fact, even during the apartheid time, it has ever, never, ever happened. We're just seeing these funny ways. That's why we're appealing to the president to say his government must show in his conscience that it is serious in upholding the, the laws of the country and the gains that we have made throughout uh, since the dawn of democracy. We can't be regressing as a country because we will then end up in a state where we, we are then viewed as if we are not progressive. But we are progressive, we're simply saying um, the employer does not come back and take us seriously in this regard. It is funny for now that employer has taken us to court and threatened to take us to court 
for demanding the, the, the wage increase that we have signed as an agreement. It is so funny that we, we think something is wrong and we think if the president can intervene, only then can it happen. So we demand the intervention of the president. He must not sleep and think things are okay or things are normal. He must know that we are aggrieved and uh, we have not let down the country and not even the employer. We have kept on working throughout the times and even going to the cold phase, some contracting, some even dying. In that regard, we have not been thanked, not even been appreciated that we are also having financial difficulties. You know, Mr. Shungwani, the reasonable expectation of how the government would respond to your demands is that, uh, you know, the government does not have money, and understandably so because of this coronavirus and the adverse effects that the virus has had on the country's economy and, of course, and the social well-being in general of all South Africans. So uh, you have just suggested that the government should give you at least tax breaks of between three to six months, uh, which will perhaps uh, get you going. But then that uh, will take time because it still needs to be you know, certain laws or policies still need to, need to be promulgated in that regard and it's going to take time. So have you given the president an ultimatum or perhaps turnaround times for him to address those concerns? We, we do expect that the president should be able to respond to us in seven days and we expect that when he addresses the nation this week, um, he should be able to touch this matter. We are thinking that because of the state of disaster, the turnaround time should be different uh, you would have seen how the government has managed to put aside 500 billion. And we are saying of that 500 billion, there's nothing, not even two cents for nurses, not even two cents for public servants. We are ordinarily receiving what was due to us in terms of the normal um, monies that was due. But we are told of that amount, there was never even a single portion that was put aside to say this is for wage increase for public servants and the nurses. Nothing was put aside to cushion us in terms of the danger allowance or risk allowance. But we're thinking we can't do business as usual when we know we're in a pandemic and the state of disaster regulations requires that things are done, the turnaround run time should be different. So we are expecting that when he addresses the nation, he must then say something about these matters. And in fact, we expect a positive response. And uh, other than that, we'll have no choice but to, to wait for a fight and make sure that we, we fight for what is rightfully ours. And uh, we are working jointly as the, as the Joint uh, Mandating Committee of COSATU, where we are together with other unions and we're going to make sure that we fight for this thing and we're not going to be ready. We're, we're just going to, to, to wage on and make sure that at least um, we receive what is due to us. So what are the solutions that you're offering uh, for the government to consider? Well, one is that, uh, if you may remember very well, that uh, only around uh, a certain small portion was uh, of the amount of 200 billion that was put aside for businesses uh, as a guarantor. It has only been, been allocated to where it is necessary. We are saying, for us, we are here, we are necessary, we are available. They must reprioritize and give back that money. If they say they don't have money, we are providing another solution. Give us a tax break and the turnaround time cannot be as usual as in the past because we are currently in the state of disaster, which requires that things are done differently and expedited in this regard. So we don't think we are unreasonable. We have demonstrated, we have not neglected our workstation, we have ne not neglected our society and the people that are sick. We kept on working, we saved many lives, and we are still continuing to do that. We are only asking the state and the presidency to do its part in appreciating and giving us what is due at the current moment. We think that is reasonable, and we are appealing for, 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 for the society in general, uh, including media, to at least see this point for us. We have not been cushioned in any way. All other people have been cushioned, businesses, unemployed people, and we appreciate that there has been a lot of cushioning and um, making money available for the vulnerable people. But we are saying we are also one sector that is currently vulnerable. We have families, we have people that are unemployed at the current moment who are assisting, assisting as well. But we are saying where, what is there for us? Nothing is, has come forth at the current moment. And we are pleading with the conscience of the president. As he addresses the nation, let him address this matter. If he doesn't address, he's in for a huge fight that we are bringing to him. And considering Thank the you. high number of infections within the fraternity uh, and, uh, you know, the high number of uh, infections, uh, essentially, uh, of nurses, so what are you doing about it? What is it that you're going to do while you still wait for the government's response to address your concerns? 
Well, the, the, the high number of infections is it's, it's, it's currently going down. It's following the national trends, as you can know. But we are simply saying at the current moment, we, we have noticed many other different things that we are fighting in different forums. We've had the meetings we, with the minister at some point, the National Health Council, where we were saying we want to monitor in terms of what are the causative factors. We have noted that in our rounds when we were checking the facilities, we found one facility that was so funny, um, Twani District Hospital, for example, they were, they were reusing uh, disposable gowns. So you imagine a gown that is meant to be used and disposed of, but they were take, make, taking it and say it must be rewashed and, uh, and ironed out and to be reused, including masks and so on. But also we have noted that uh, the quality of some products that were provided as PPE was a problem, and we, we predict that it could have been one of the issues that have led because in one facility in KZN, it was saying it's a mask that we are given its written, uh, it's, it's a mask that we must be used. But when you look at the box itself, it was written not for use in the medical environment, which means the protection was poorly compromised. As a result, um, as a result, it would have risked many other health workers to contract the, the, the virus itself. So we are fighting in that regard. We are just saying. Uh, while we are fighting for that in the level of the current employer and Department of Health with the minister there, the president must focus on the two areas that we can clearly say for the past five months, uh, we are in month five now, after we have tabled the agenda for discussion to respond in terms of danger allowance, the employer still comes back to us and say they don't have a mandate, which is their representatives. So we are saying, President, your people are not showing any seriousness with regard to the two items, which is the issue of danger allowance or risk allowance and the issue of wage increase. They are taking us to court. The employer has never ever taken the unions to court to say, I don't want to pay people the wage increase that I signed for. It is funny the things that are happening and unbecoming. In fact, it's tantamount to a, a state that behaves uh, or the employer that would behave like a, a, a dictatorship uh, that doesn't want to, 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 to follow the processes that we have and they're frustrating everyone. So we're saying the president can intervene in that regard and turn things around. We are requesting him to do so. In fact, we're demanding that he touches this matter. If he doesn't touch it, we are in and we're going to, to, to then stage and increase our efforts in ensuring that we win what we want. Thanks. Just in closing, are nurses getting any psychosocial support in the, execution, in the execution of their mandate? Because being in the front line of this battle against coronavirus can be psychologically and emotionally challenging. Well, uh, you, I, I must uh, refer you as well to the research that was done by the Human Science Research Council which revealed that uh, there was very poor psychosocial support by the employers. And uh, I'm just putting it as evidence-based that is available for everybody. And I know that the, the Human Science Research Council is conducting another research uh, now that the, the search has, has at least a little bit gone down. But generally, from the reports that we get from members, there was no, no, no support in the beginning and slight support currently. But, you know, nurses are worried and everyone else is worried that if, if my colleague gets uh, positive or if my colleague dies, when am I going to be, uh, am I going to be the next person to die? Am I going to be the next person to get infected? And during that process, there were no psychological support to assist us with counseling and so on until some other private sector psychologists and other uh, practitioners in that space came in to even offer free services to nurses, but unfortunately because there were few and there was a, a whole lot of many other people that needed uh, the assistance in, in that space, it was not adequate and we called upon that the department and the employers must provide such. And I must say this is a process that is uh, we are working with with the department in some areas they are responding with a slight increase in the services itself, but generally there wasn't a psychosocial support and there was no psychological support at all because it has been destroyed. It used to be there in the system in the past. It has come to a certain point where it was then completely completely demolished uh, within facilities. But we are saying if we are to do and make sure that there is resilient uh, um, health systems in South Africa, we must strengthen all the systems and, and make sure that we are ready for another health uh, crisis that may occur in the in the future because we must not think this is the last pandemic and we must not think this is the health 
the only health crisis that we're facing. There might be other health crises that are coming in future, and we must be ready at all the times. That includes, in our letter, we have indicated the reports that were published by the World Health Organization that said we must produce, uh, each country must, must produce 8% uh, an increase of training of, um, of health uh, professionals, in particular nurses, on, in the country. We know that in our country, the training and the numbers have been going down and down, and I don't, we are not at the current moment even, even at 8%, but we are saying if our country is to be resilient, those are the things that must be prioritized and addressed. If not, we are going to find ourselves in a serious crisis because a lot of nurses that are above 60 at the current moment, we predict that they are going to resign or to retire most of them, okay. and we know that uh, the Western world is going to come to us and, and take uh, our nurses in through the brain drain because they have the money and the muscles. We can only uh, mitigate those circumstances by increasing the training to make sure that we are able okay. to replace okay. those that will be living at the current moment. Mr. Tlungwani, we certainly hope that the presidency will prioritize uh, your, uh, your issues that you've raised with him because, uh, you know, uh, nurses are still in the front line and are essential workers uh, in the fraternity. Thank you so much for chatting to us this morning. Pleasure. Thank you very much. That was uh, Simon Tlungwani, the president of the Democratic Nursing Organization of South Africa, DINOSA, responding to that open letter that they penned to the president, uh, you know, essentially imploring him to address the con their concerns of nurses in the front line.